Welcome everybody. We're going to get started here in just a moment. We have 77 registered for the one o'clock session of this event. And so I'm going to continue to let people in as they arrive. But we're so excited that each of you could be a part of this important conversation today. And thank you for sharing this next hour with us. It's my pleasure to introduce Tracy Williams, who is our National Alumni Board President. Tracy, take it away. Hi, everyone. I am checking my mic. I just received a message that it may not be working, but I just got the thumbs up from Amanda. So I just want to first welcome you all to the kickoff meeting for the Alumni Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. I also want to thank you for spending um, the next hour of your time with us as we move forward with some actionable steps that we'll be taking over um, the next, for the remainder of this year. Uh, we spent the last few months listening to all of our alumni, both in large groups, small groups, and one-on-one -on -one to understand not only the, the challenges that uh, alumni are facing in this time of social unrest and social injustice, but also to hear what actions you want to take in order to be a voice and in order to be a, a positive um, force and positive movement for the TCU community, as well as our broader community um, within Fort Worth and beyond. So I'm excited for today because now we get to take the next step from listening and planning to taking action. And that's exactly what we're here to do for the next hour. Today, um, our goals are to one, understand the guiding principles for the Alumni Association DEI committee. We will be looking at collaborating on foundational mission and vision themes, establish actionable and tactical starting points for each of the subcommittees that have been established um, for this committee. And lastly, to mobilize you as alumni to lead, serve, and engage on a DEI subcommittee. So I'd like to go over what those subcommittees are and then give you a couple of um, pieces of information around the structure of the subcommittees and how you can engage. Our first subcommittee is awareness and we will be coalescing around the knowledge or perception of a situation or fact. Our next subcommittee is education and the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction. We have a subcommittee for advocacy um, where we will look at what does public support for or recommendation look like um, for a particular cause, and in this case, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And lastly, we have a subcommittee for action, um, doing something to achieve an aim. So for each of these subcommittees, we will be looking for two co-chairs for each committee, as well as a reporter for each committee, and you have the opportunity to volunteer to serve in those roles. Just to give you a brief overview of what the responsibilities will be for each of those roles. As co-chairs, you will be responsible for attending some core committee meetings with each of the other subcommittee co-chairs. You'll also be responsible for scheduling and facilitating your subcommittee meetings with your, with your subcommittee members. And then managing the overall progress of the actions and goals that are set for each subcommittee. Um, you'll also be responsible for liaising with myself in the alumni relations office as you move forward um, with your plans and your goals. As a reporter, you'll be responsible for um, communicating the progress of the subcommittees via taking notes at all meetings and preparing a summary of those meeting notes to be shared with our larger, with our larger group. And at times also responsible for attending um, core committee meetings as well. Amanda has just put a Google form in the chat. If you click that link, you can nominate yourself to serve as a subcommittee chair or reporter, and we will be meeting with the final um, group of subcommittee chairs and reporters, um, preferably next week. Um, so please indicate your ability to attend a meeting next Wednesday. If that date does not work, we will look at a subsequent date that works for all subcommittee chairs and reporters for um, in order for us to meet before you schedule your first meetings. With that, um, I am going to introduce our facilitator for today. Um, I am pleased to introduce you to Renita Joy Smith. And 
over the last years for a management consulting and strategy experience, she has been serving as director of strategy and delivery for Employee Bridge and principal for her own form, uh, firm, Leap Forward Consulting, where she spe specializes in facilitation and strategy development. She defines comprehensive solutions for complex enterprise level problems, develops actionable plans, engages resources, and ensures optimal implementation for her clients. Over the course of Renita's career, she has successfully consulted for Microsoft, Bank of America, Hunt, and Baylor Scott and & White, and many more companies within the DFW Metroplex and beyond. Her commitment to service also spans from the office to the community, where she currently serves as the executive sponsor for diversity and inclusion for the Junior League of Dallas. She is also a board member for the first three years in Chase's Place and a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and Leadership Dallas. As if that isn't enough, <laughs> Your time, she practices self care through random adventures in painting and spoiling her fur babies, Mason and Toussaint. We are very fortunate and, and blessed to have Renita as our facilitator for the remainder of this meeting. And Renita, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Tracy. It is an honor um, to be here with the TCU Alumni Association. Again, I cannot thank uh, Tracy and Amanda enough. Uh, with trusting me with your Horn Frog family. DEI is a passion for me. Um, I have followed it for the majority of my career, um, been a champion and an advocate for it uh, in the boardrooms I've been a part of, in the organizations. It is such a central part um, of who we are and the progress that we can make, uh, both within our personal lives, our community, our country, and ultimately globally, just continuing to build better bridges um, across us because we are more common than we are not. So I am so excited to usher you through this process as your alumni association begins to build out the action plans for your subcommittees. Now, I'm going to tell you, this will be a very collaborative process. So get ready to come off those mics and vote and be engaged in this because this is about you. The Alumni Association Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee is alumni-driven. It's action-oriented. It is a collaborative environment for us to come up with ideas together and execute, and it is engaging. So two of these things that are very important for today's session is to understand that this is your committee. So the ideas that you wanna put forth into the TCU com com uh, community are all coming from you. In addition, this is collaborative. So really just wanting to make sure that, oops, sorry about that, uh, make sure that uh, your ideas are being heard, that we're working together on this to develop something very special to be a rollout. So how will, first, before we get into how today will work, you'll see a poll pop up right now. I would love to get a pulse check about how you're feeling about the new DEI committee. Are you interested and eager to learn more? Do you have ideas by the boatloads? Are you ready to share them? Are you saying, you know what, I'm ready to get to work today. Sign me up as a reporter, sign me up as a chair, or are you not quite sure yet? So we'll take a moment to take the poll. And just focus on question number one for right now. So we'll give that about 15 more seconds. Get those fingers working because we will have a lot of polls on today. Awesome. So we can end this poll and let's see the results. Did everyone see the poll because it's not um, recognizing any it wouldn't let me submit if I didn't answer the other question. Got it. So that's an error yeah, on my end. I didn't submit because I didn't finish the poll. Got it. <laughs> so, lesson learned. So I will fix that um, moving forward, but um, we'll come back to this, Renita. Okay. And that way, once everyone has an opportunity to look through all, once we go through the presentation, we can come back to this. Perfect. Sounds good good to me. So just for a, a few of you, um, we'll take two people really quickly. Uh, if you are brave enough to share, how are you feeling about the committee? 
I'll go. Awesome. Elle Michelle Smith, class of 93 and 95. I'm a Schieffer school adjunct <laughs> and um, proud horde frog. Yeah. I will say I'm skeptical as I am with all D and I, D, E and I efforts, but I'm interested. Awesome. Thank you for your honesty and transparency there. It's perfectly fine to be skeptical um, and rightfully so, but we'll hopefully we'll turn that around towards the end of the meeting. Um, I'll go. Uh -huh. uh, my name is Christine Wright, um, 91, class of 91. I'm department chair for occupational therapy at Arkansas State University. And um, I'm just thrilled because uh, the last article that was at the alumni magazine and the responses from other TCU alumni regarding the subject matter of my diverse community were not favorable. Um, and so uh, especially the feedback from other alumni was very hateful. Um, and so I'm very excited to help advocate and um, hopefully have my um, community more favorably represented and represented period because um, um, I'm more in an invisible category. So I would like to be more visible. That thank is, you. thank you for, for sharing that as well. And I love the, the, coming from the perspective of just wanting to advocate and, and get out front and working to change the narrative. Cause that is really the component of the EI work is to advocate, help change the, change the narrative and to also influence. So, as Tracy alluded to earlier, we have a robust afternoon. So the next 45 minutes, uh, we'll be engaged on the first part of this process. So the creation of this committee basically has four steps. Today, we're gonna ideate and brainstorm on what are those actions and focus areas for each committee. There is no bad, bad idea. Um, so we just wanna get all of those on the table. Next, we'll go through a selection process. And we might have to do this a bit more audibly for this round. Uh, we're going to do it with the polls, but we will um, make it work. So if we come up with 15 fantastic ideas for the Awareness Committee, realistically, what can be done in 2020? We want to be able to vote and discuss what are those top three areas that, that Awareness Committee should focus on. So at the end of the day, when we get ready to initiate and kick off our subcommittees, when we have chairs and reporters and you have signed up on Horn Frog Connect, um, on what subcommittee that you will want to work on, we will be able to give them an action plan to say, your committee shall focus on these three things to execute through the end of 2020. Knowing that there are more initiatives that are to come, but what are those quick wins that we can do between now and the end of the year and really focus our efforts and execute to a degree of excellence um, where people are able to see progress as well. One key thing that as we talk and have this discussion, please remember that um, this is in the realm of the span of control for TCU alumni. The university has their process of how they are putting together policy um, and rolling that out. But there are certain things also that the TCU alumni can directly uh, produce, influence, and execute. So we really want to make sure that we focus on those things in particular. Any questions before we get to the brainstorming? Perfect, so I'm gonna flip over. So first we are going to start with the mission of the de &I committee. So knowing that a mission and vision statement can be a little bit complex to develop and it grows and morphs over time, there are still some foundational principles and themes that you want your mission statement to encompass. So I've preceded a couple words here of promote, facilitate, Celebrate, value, create, serve, advocate, lead. These are words that would probably be involved in the mission statement for the committee. What other themes do you want as the core mission for your committee? And opening the floor for ideas, you can also respond via the chat and I'll keep an eye on that and add it to a sticky note here. I see educate in the chat. Thank you for that. Demand, that's a great one. And feel free to come off uh, mute as well uh, and voice it over.
include, great. Access. That. Good, good, good. Measurable results, that is a great one. And it's not Access. too long. We will... Yes, we got that as well. Access, thank you. We have Embrace. Model. And we have Include. This is really, really great. So with this, knowing that we have a couple that are on the board currently, and Amanda, just making sure I'm checking, we won't be able to poll for this, right? Okay, great. Let's think of, if everyone can maybe pick one of these and put it in the chat around what you think could be, we can move over to those core themes um, for, oh, yay, thank you, Amanda. <laughs> Love it. So the poll is open. Please pick two options here for a theme that you think should be definitely in the mission statement. We'll give you about 15 seconds to vote here. And the way this will work is those that have the top results will move over to the next side as um, words to consider as we're building out the mission and theme, um, the mission and vision for the committee. Now, no, we're still all in the brainstorming session, brainstorming phase, and as we get into our formal committees, these are just suggestions that they're going to start as a launching pad as we develop it formally. Love the results coming through. We'll just give you guys another 20 seconds here. Then we'll move now, on. Renita, Renita yes. uh, the word celebrate isn't on the poll. That's, so it only gave me 10 options. So we will make that note, Raquel, to add that if that's your choice. Definitely. Okay, we'll just give a few more seconds for the votes. Perfect. So we can end this poll and share the results. Okay, it looks like there's a lot of passion around educate. So we will move this piece over. There's also a lot of energy around measurable results. and advocate, which is an amazing theme, and it's also one of our committees, so we're good to be there as well. And like value. So our theme will center around these four core components, but also bring in some of these other words that are definitely important as well. So we know that our committee will be around educating with measurable results, advocating for those who may not be able to advocate for themselves or advocating for change and policy, really valuing uh, who we are and valuing people and making sure it is inc as inclusive as possible. So thank you for participating in this one. Now, these words do not go away. We will continue to, again, uh, massage this as we develop a statement, but we'll focus on these five as we really begin to craft it moving forward. So our first committee that we want to talk about ideas for action areas around is awareness. Now what we did, you'll see this preceded from previous conversations um, with the listen and learn, where we broke out into subcommittees, sorry, subgroups, and came up with ideas around awareness. We took that feedback and went ahead and put it within this idea structure. If you weren't on those calls, I'll read them to you really, really quickly. Um, for the awareness committee, creating opportunities to socialize with new frogs. There can be times where we stick within our own circles. So figuring out ways to uh, bridge the gap and bring people together in different ways and socialize with those outside of your normal friendship list. For when speakers come to campus, make sure that those are recorded and shared with a broader audience. Uh, programming and support for BAA, HAA, and the LGBTQ organizations. Uh, making DEI resources um, available on Horn Frogs Connect, creating engagement spaces 
to be able to share and talk about and have um, safe discussions about DEI. Driving a diverse membership base for Quink, and I'm sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. Also identify organizations and um, businesses that are promoting diversity and inclusion efforts within the community and really promoting them and pushing them forward as they're leading the way. Having a meet the faculty where you're able to introduce uh, diverse faculty and staff at TCU. Developing a plan around pathways to alumni leadership and targeted student engagement. So those are some of the, uh, the ideas that came out from previous meetings. So with this population on the call, when you're thinking about awareness, what types of actions could be focused on for 2020 for the Awareness Committee? And a way to think about this is if you were serving on awareness, what would you want to work on between now and the end of the year as one of those, maybe either a low hanging fruit to get out the door or what's something actionable and measurable, as we said in our mission that was important here that can be done with the awareness committee. Great question, Laura. So uh, Laura is asking, um, how will our discussions and decisions on um, this call be uh, joined with the second alumni meeting? So what we'll do is we'll take the results from this meeting and also the themes and the secondary ones, we'll pull those together. I'll pull together a comprehensive report um, of all the action areas that were voted on and talked about and ideas that were generated. And when we have our meeting with the chairs and the reporters next week, we'll provide them with the full results of both sessions and a comprehensive summary. And then when you get, they get to their subcommittee meetings, you'll also have all these results to be able to talk about as well. So we'll unify it on the back end. Great question. So the goal of this session, thank you, Michelle, for that. So the goal of this session is to give the committees a starting point. So um, maybe you have probably been on teams, organizations where it's sometimes really hard to think out of the, the blue ideas. So instead of the awareness committee coming together and saying, you know what, where do we start? We wanted to poll the alumni community of ideas and actions that you guys want to see developed so we can give them a starting point on what's important to the alumni association so that they're working kind of the same spirit of what the alumni community wants. That's the goal, just to give them a starting point. You may be on mute, Michelle. Can I do a follow-up question? Yes, please. To that? Okay. Are there any, is there any data or any insights that informs um, where we're starting right here? so that it isn't just, we have ideas. Oh, now I think you're muted. I can't hear you. Oh no, I was thinking about your, your, your question. So you're saying data insights from the TCU community in particular, or elaborate TCU more on that? And, and beyond, third party, and also the state of the campus. It's, I think that's from the past sessions and also understanding that there are themes that are going in. I think that will be dug into definitely more than the subcommittee themselves. Um, so as a starting point, I would recommend is really going to what would you want to see done um, from an awareness perspective within these committees. Knowing that again, these will be refined and to your point, bringing in uh, the data from the, the, the community and best practices but this is really just kind of purely brainstorming portion. And Renita, I can add to that too, yes. Michelle, um, with the two, if these themes have come from two listening sessions that we've done with our alumni groups over the past couple of months. We've also taken a look at some other documents, including, <laughs> um, including a document of student demands that had been presented earlier. Okay. Um, and really created these things from that information. So um, we're, we're using the qu more qualitative data as a starting point, and then we'll be able to bring and ground this in some more quantitative data as we get into the subcommittees. That's um, great. I just don't want to be tone deaf to right. the state of things. 
Absolutely. So we have been, we've been, this is all coming from qualitative data conversations and additional, um, and additional documents that we've taken a look at over the last few months. And okay. then your subcommittees will have additional information for you. And too. one more and I'll be quiet. Mm -hmm. Any consideration over the current cultural context and how that plays into this? Absolutely. So this is something that, um, and from, and I can tell you all from really last year, we have been looking at kind of campus climate, what's happening within um, the alumni ranks as well as on, on campus. And we had started this work even last year and it's been, um, or the conversations since last year. And then it's been, of course, um, I would say even more prioritized for us. And so we're taking all of that into context and we'll be looking at how we bridge the gap between what the Alumni Association is doing. And I apologize for if you hear um, the noise outside, uh, what the Alumni Association is doing and then how that will influence um, what is happening across campus with the university and the policies that they're setting forth as well. So um, part of my goal is to be able to bridge that gap and, and be a conduit between the Alumni Association and what we're seeing happening in the campus on, on campus as well. And we have some information that we're going to share with some announcements that have come out today um, that I think will address the, will address some of your um, questions as well with some campus initiatives that are happening. Okay, and just to be clear, when I say the cultural context, I mean not just the campus, but this global civil rights movement that, that's absolutely. going on right now, the rebuke absolutely. on anti-Blackness. Yes, okay. absolutely. Thank you. Great discussion. So with that, Michelle, do you have any, any ideas maybe to add to the awareness component that may be off the top for you or anyone on the call as well? Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, I think that if we're still talking about awareness, it's very important to not only project, but reflect a willingness to listen and to learn. And I say that because we all come into these processes with some preconceived ideas and notions from our own experiences. So we have to kind of put those aside. And again, as I said, be willing to listen and learn from other people. Right, right. Completely agree. And if, if I could, I'd like to um, offer a little bit. Let me introduce myself first because I am not an alumna of TCU. I am um, Dr. Claire Sanders. I teach um, in the Department of History, but I'm also the Provost Faculty Fellow and Academic Affairs DEI Advocate. I, additionally, I am the co-chair of the African American and Africana Studies minor. I'm um, affiliate faculty in the Department of Comparative Race and Ethnic Studies, and I'm also affiliate faculty in the Women and Gender Studies Department. Um, so I am here Primarily, primarily to listen, but I do have one, I might have one or two things to say, but I also just wanted to be um, sort of a conduit and a liaison for information as you think is appropriate. I will only, you know, share or relate back um, um, as instructed, if you will, although mm -hmm. I will, as, a, as I, as if you will trust my judgment, I will keep the provost informed as I think is, um, is, is necessary. But at this juncture, I think what I wanted to say with regard to awareness is to think about visibility in the sense that especially students are not aware. I mean, as in they can't see the diversity in the alumni community. Um, and I think that's particularly keen or particularly um, important for our students from historically marginalized and underrepresented groups. I think also in um, particularly for our students who are um, community scholars and usually first gen um, um, students. So I think that just seeing, and I think that gets back to modeling. I know that that um, word came up in um, just previously, but, mm -hmm. um, and I think of that because the faculty and staff, we are so few and far between as faculty and staff of color and from historically marginalized and underrepresented groups. I would also I encourage you to be aware of the nuances and the differences between faculty and staff. Um, they frustrate me a lot, quite honestly, but they are there so that um, staff will have different needs or concerns from the needs and concerns that faculty have. So I just ask you to be um, cognizant, cognizant of that as you're moving forward. 
Thank you for that, Claire. Appreciate it. Got it. And I ask you in advance, just please forgive if you see spelling errors. Uh, it's one of those things we have people watching you, all of a sudden can't spell a lick. So just to re-ground um, us really quick, I'm going to pivot. Um, so instead of us voting, um, knowing that we have kind of more than 10 here, we'll focus this session with the remaining half hour we have left of just collecting the ideas for each area. And then we'll send out a universal survey to be able to vote on them so everyone's on the same page. And that way we can really just focus on the first box. Um, and then once we've had both meetings, I'll work with Amanda and Tracy down a universal poll for each of these areas and you'll get maybe three or four picks per. And that way, if people are able to join the call, they're still able to participate and vote and you're not limited. So before you move on to adv adv advocacy, any last minute ideas for awareness? I'm full of questions. <laughs> I'm just trying to get up to speed. So when we say awareness, who's the audience? It would make a difference in what kind of suggestions we provide. So the, I, I would think, go ahead, Tracy. Michelle, our main audience would be our, I would say our primary audience is our alumni community. Secondary audience is going to be our, um, our students on campus. And then our third or tertiary audience is going to be the broader TCU community that we okay. have, with, that includes our, the surrounding cities, et cetera. And what kind of behavior shift are we looking for as a result of making them aware? I would say, and I can only speak um, from my per, from a personal perspective as well as from what I've been hearing um, from other alumni. One is we're looking for just a an an end of of knowledge around um, our more marginalized um, populations and what some of the and some of the challenges that we that we face. Um, second, secondly, is once you have that level of awareness, being able to shift um, mindset and, um, and then looking for your behavior change. So we know that in order for us to be able to shift change and shift systems, we have to be willing, we have to have a change in, in mindset first. And so part of awareness is to be able to facilitate that change or shift in mindset for our, um, for our, our identified audiences. And then from there, how can we inf influence behavioral changes and action that they'll be willing to take? Michelle, I'm going to hop in here as well. Um, also, most of our affinity, well, all of our affinity groups have pretty much primarily stayed in the DFW region as far as ways to be engaged. Now that we're in this new virtual world, it allows us to be broader and allows us to really advocate to our clubs and chapter cities the same types of programming that we haven't been able to, or weren't able to do before. And so this is really giving us the opportunity to educate our club and chapter cities as well to provide a broader breadth of programming for our TCU alumni. We are hearing for the first time from alumni all over the world now that we're making so much of our programming virtual and we will be virtual throughout this fiscal year. So this, we're gonna be in this space and even after the global pandemic, we want to maintain this global virtual space to allow that universal um, partnership for all alumni. And so I think we've been limited in scope in the past, and this is giving us an opportunity to broaden that horizon. That's awesome context. Thank you so much. And thank you for the, the, uh, the question as well. It, it'll help us going into the next session to be able to know what to reground people on as well. So thank you for that feedback and those questions. So moving along to ad, ad, advocacy, and it's always one of those words that's just a little bit tricky. So knowing that, again, the context of pulling the ideas from past discussions, what's currently on the board is to advocate for a more diverse representation on, uh, on TCU committees and boards, uh, maybe some efforts around get out the vote, increase fundraising efforts for the e &I committees or affinity groups as well, educate alumni on the initiatives that are going on. So knowing that there's about to be a lot of great work 
um, that's happening in this space, how can we keep alumni in the, in the uh, loop and just make sure that they're informed and can also help advocate for issue areas. Uh, promoting initiatives outside of DFW. So knowing that not everyone still lives uh, within the Dallas-Fort Worth area, so how do you, are we able to get them still involved um, and engaged and also informed? Encourage business owners uh, locally to get involved with the movement um, and even coming up with an an alumni anti-hate pledge to advocate for that so that all alumni will participate in the pledge um, against anti-hate, anti-racism as well. We do have one pocket over here that's currently in progress. And Tracy, do you want to talk a little bit about the Race and Reconciliation Task Force? Absolutely. So um, just maybe 20 minutes ago, the announcement came out for the um, Race and Reconciliation Initiative that TCU is launching. And we're very excited about that. And we'll put the link of the website in the chat for everyone to go um, take a look at take a look at the website and all that will be related to the race and reconciliation initiative. Um, this is going to be a scholarly journey to the past of TCU that will be able to both um, provide some enlightenment and provide some institutional knowledge from which we can build the future that we're looking for at, um, at TCU. And so I would invite everyone to join or to take a look at the new Race and Reconciliation Initiative website that TCU has launched. Um, we will be diving into the um, legacy of what has sh what's shaped the university, um, even looking digging into the past of how um, slavery and the Confederacy have shaped TCU's past and and are playing a role even now in, in, in terms of our present practices, but also what we can do to move forward. So this was just announced earlier today. Um, the first town hall for the Race and Reconciliation Initiative will happen Thursday, August 27th at 3 p.m. And we'll keep you all informed on um, additional opportunities to really follow the journey of the, um, of the initiative and the work of the task force. You have an opportunity to sign up if you'd like to also consider joining one of the work groups that's listed on the website. So um, we'll put that in the link or put that link in the chat and I invite everyone to um, go to the website, read through the, um, the work that we have ahead of us with that initiative. And please, if you're interested in being considered for a work group, please sign up um, so that you can be a part of that consideration. And the link is in the chat. Thank you, Tracy. So now that that is in progress, bringing us back to other ideas for adv adv advocacy. We're gonna master that one one day. Opening the floor now, feel free to take yourself off mute or continue to put them in the chat and I'll add them to the list of ideas for the subcommittee for advocacy. And again, continue to think about what can be actionable uh, before the end of 2020. As was mentioned in the last, um, last committee, think about different groups that can be affected, whether it's the current student population, other alumni, the community. Thank you, Christine, saying, I would like to see ed educate alumni on initiatives and promote issues outside of the FW. I think that's very, mu very much important. So I will add that actually, educate and promote on this one. Promoting diverse musicians and filmmakers, that is a fantastic piece, especially during these times. We need all of the art and culture we can get, um, and having those different voices is critically important. Other ideas for how to advocate in this space? Identifying organizations and community partner initiatives that can benefit from the alumni dollars. Yes. And again, especially during these uh, COVID times, um, there are a lot of people that are looking for support in our community. Great. Can I jump in here real quick? Please do. 
Okay, sorry. Um, I know I've, this is my second time on. I just put a, um, a thing in the chat saying, can we have swag made that helps us advocate? Um, you know, I'm in Jonesboro, Arkansas, right? Small community, but you should, you would be amazed how many TCU stickers I see in a town of 30,000 and, you know, a couple hours. But if I could have a sticker, a bumper sticker, a something that I can put on my car that says I took the anti-hate pledge or, you know, I, when I think of advocacy, I, I try to look at the visuals and the word of mouth and, it, you know, trying to get out all of that, that, or I'm an alumni uh, that supports DE and I, or what, what at diversity, equity, inclusion, or I don't know. Anyway, just throwing it that out makes there. Sense. No, it's a great idea. And, and, and also thank you for those, that, first, thank you, Christine, for that. I, I personally too love a good amount of swag. I'm happy to put a bumper sticker, or wear a t-shirt in a heartbeat. Uh, it actually makes fantastic conversation pieces as well um, to be able to advocate and start that conversation. Putting on a couple extra post notes, definitely keep them coming in the chat here. I've been able to share content from creators of color um, from inside and outside of TCU. Measuring faculty on their cultural competency as a requirement or criteria for tenure. Uh, creating meaningful sponsorship and, and, and advocacy opportunities for alumni and students. Let's see what else we have. Oh, a small business grant uh, program for underrepresented groups. Yes. And we'll spend about one more minute on this one, then we'll move on to education. And know that you, you don't have to fully wordsmith it. I can just copy it and paste and we'll tune it up on the back end when it gets put out for the full vote. Got it. And then changes to the change process. Da, da, da. Got it. Focus area for the, thank you, Claire, for explaining that, that it is a focus area for the provost currently. Okay. I think we're getting warmed up now. So moving on to education. So education, we've hinted on this a little bit in some of the other uh, committee, being able to educate around what issue areas, um, how to have these conversations. So with this piece, making sure that that looks right, yes. Educating alumni on initiatives, what other components of education that you think would be a great focus for the United focus on? I have a suggestion. Yes. Um, so, oh, hi, I'm Deanna. I'm class of 2014. I don't know how much the alumni can do about this one, but I've been thinking about this for a while. For TCU to create a um, partnership or a, what is it called? A, um, what is it called? It's called a, it's, it's like a, an exchange program with an historical black college university very similar to what Baylor University is doing right now with Xavier University. And then the HBCU I was thinking about will be Jarvis Christian College, considering they too is a liberal arts school as well. And um, during my time at TCU, I was told by one of the faculty members at TCU that Jarvis actually has some form of a relationship um, with TCU as relates to land and oil and everything. So, and this wasn't the first idea, the first time this idea was brought up. Um, the gentleman who was the first um, African-American Board of Trustees for TCU actually brought this idea up to the Board of Trustees um, a while back. So I think it will be great if we can revisit this idea um, of creating an exchange program. Deanna, that's awesome about Jarvis. I got to jump in because that's where black students were sent when they applied to TCU before integration. Wow. That's the relationship. Google it. And the name is, sorry, the name is the same Jarvis as Jarvis Hall on TCU's campus. So it's the same yeah. family name. Same thing. And I had um, church members at my church here in Dallas that were overwhelmed when I was accepted into TCU because they were some of the ones that got sent to Jarvis. And of course, uh, Jarvis is a great school, but Jarvis didn't have all of the accommodations that TCU did during that time. So 
that would be a great gesture, especially as we're looking at the historical, you know, story yeah. of TCU. Mm -hmm. It's a great tie-in, great tie-in there. And I do apologize, a couple of the post-it notes carried over from the last board there. So the ones that were supposed to be here uh, are forming alumni club leaders of um, the programming that's happening within the alumni association so that they can be able to disseminate it uh, to their members. Uh, general education on TCU information. So knowing that sometimes communication from the university level uh, can be either a bit slow or maybe hard to attain, or those might not be really engaged or paying attention. Having the education subcommittee uh, be a, an app, a, a venue for pulling out that information and really making sure that the alumni know what's happening with the university. Uh, a resource repository for resources on mental health, race conversations, which also correlate back to the, what we said in awareness, uh, and culturally responsive programming, or some other ideas that came from past sessions. Now, there was a question in the chat on what really is the line in between these committees. I think once we get the chairs together um, and all the ideas on the board and voted and those areas really honed in on, we can begin as a next step to determine what committee will handle which one. So yes, some of them will, will bleed, bleed over, um, but hopefully there'll be some collaboration also between the subcommittees too. So that was a great, great question there. Okay, and I'm going back to the chat here. So having alumni groups meet up in different cities, even virtually, and having, I love that. And having those educational talks, kind of like, like a tailgate and hopefully football will go ahead and come on back one day, but definitely virtually in the meantime, and having the conversations and creating that sense of community. And I see virtual trainings for alumni students and families to understand the historical complexities of the school. So def that could uh, be a fantastic output from uh, the Race and Reconciliation Task Force, those learnings coming out and then turning those into trainings and reporting out on it once the committee has completed their work. Any other recommendations for education? Okay, home stretch. Y'all are doing a fantastic job. Action. Oh, I see alumni mixers. Yes, with an education twist with HBCU groups. Make sure that makes it to the list. Now, actually, for this one, um, Michelle, would you be okay if I put this one on action? This is kind of one of those more. Let's <laughs> get <laughs> great. So there's it because definitely one of those that can be something that can be scheduled and put out there, um, even virtually. Uh, that would be a great way to create dialogue within our community communities um, and start bridging that gap. What other ideas for action? So currently on the table. Uh, there's international, creating an international student affinity groups, uh, educating chapter clubs, which we've talked about before, an alumni mentoring campaign. So one of those each one reach ones. And so making sure our current student population can be engaged and tied in to the alumni committee, a uh, community. Other ideas for action. Um, if I could make a, yet another suggestion, especially Please. among among staff of color, I happen to meet regularly with a group of women of color. There are a lot of women of color that I'm aware of on this campus who have side hustles. So um, any sort of reaching out or mentoring or support of um, staff, I know only of a couple of faculty who might also be um, independent business people. I don't know if that goes. I don't know if that goes in action, but I, it might. We'll find a home for it for sure. But I think it does, though. Uh, so. Like that. Uh, and Peyton in the chat says, opportunity to work uh, current students to host a new Black Student Weekend or Day program. Great Hi, way to this engage. Is 
This Hi. is Raquel Lee. Hey, this is Raquel Lee from um, class of 2014. To Peyton's point, we were speaking about that. We have a sorority group chat offline, whatever. <laughs> but we were speaking about this uh the black student weekend experience i remember when i first uh, got to tcu's campus in 2010 there used to be some sort of weekend like that uh, and so I, I i'm not sure how or why it went away but as we think about even you know revitalizing that initiative um to include you know our our marginalized students or you know minority students of color hispanic um you know black uh, i mean all different types of races, but really just connecting, you know, our diverse populations with prospective students that are looking to come to campus or are considering TCU. I would love to see that as an action plan again. Thank you for that, Raquel. Oh, and then I did have one more. I just thought about it. Sorry. Yes, this please. Again. This is great. Um, thinking about how we uh, integrate uh, upcoming graduates into alumni initiatives. So some sort of action plan. I know the BAA has like a mixer or some sort of dinner or cocktail hour for upcoming uh, graduates or seniors but reaching out to them, getting them senior year to start the discussion of, you know, their post-grad plan, ways to be involved with the university and support alumni initiatives or, you know, incoming freshmen or whatever the case may be, but really just uh, connecting with them before they begin their senior year and not waiting yes. until it's too late. That is great. I know even from my, my personal um, experience coming, I am a Longhorn. Um, but come, <laughs> coming out, if, I think if I had a bit more engagement, I would have joined alum, the Alumni Association a bit faster uh, than later on in my years. So that's definitely a great point of get them while they're still fresh and passionate about TCU um, and get them engaged. I'm going to steal Amanda's oh, thunder. Uh, Peyton, really quick. Go I ahead, Peyton. Wanted to, I just wanted to jump off of um, uh, Raquel's comment, too. Also, I'm a, I'm a Longhorn second. I, I did my grad degree um, at UT, but uh, jumping off of uh, Rocky's idea, maybe if there's a way during the senior year to um, pinpoint somebody as like maybe an ambassador um, for that class and so that they can also help um, when it comes to pushing being integrated uh, and working with uh, BAA. So have them kind of be the liaison between the Alumni Association and, and their class. Oh, I'd like to push that one step further, if I could, and steal a little bit of Amanda's thunder. Um, if you could think about, potentially think about using um, Horn Frogs Connect to not only help initiate students into the alumni community, but also help them as they launch into whatever else comes next after TCU, their first steps after TCU, because I, I, I always, um, Amanda knows the, the backstory for this part, but I worry about students um, being unprepared for or not having a plan for what for life after TCU, as I call it. So I think that could be a, an action um, step for or plan for the this group in particular. That's good. And then I'm going to cap this off into um, not reducing the barrier. I think Leanne, you're saying something fantastic here too. Of or is it Laura? Sorry. Uh, Laura, of changing the perspective that alumni doesn't just mean money, but alumni, alumni also means action. Uh, so let's say change the narrative. Got it. And then last, and we'll start wrapping this up. Does any person to focus on social media? Mm -hmm. That's where all the kids are nowadays. Just kidding. <laughs> It, well, here Facebook is for my generation now. It's like, oh, I thought I was still cool. And then a women affinity group to focus on power of intersectionality. Yes. Don't hate. I have a very active TikTok. I tried it. I tried it. And I was like, I'm not cool enough for this. Just not cool enough. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I want you guys to be able to kind of step back and look at the work that you have done during this session. Understanding that the work uh, 
just begins right now and it doesn't uh, stop here. The conversation will keep going. So the next steps in our process, we uh, had all the fantastic ideas today. We will send all of these suggestions and focus areas out again for the larger community to be able to select and vote on and then turn over to the committees from there. But most importantly, to be able to be a part of this, um, Horn Frogs Connect is here. So I'm gonna turn this over to Amanda to facilitate kind of the next pieces of what you can do to take this passion forward. Well, a big applause to Renita for her work on this today. Um, we could not have done this without her and Tracy's support. Um, this is a hu huge undertaking, one that we um, are excited about and can't wait to continue moving forward on. A way that you can be helpful right now is log on to hornfrogsconnect.com, register, you can utilize your um, LinkedIn profile. For those who are employees of uni the university, you can, it's a single sign on. So log on today. Renita, if you'll advance to the next slide. The, um, when you get onto the Horn Frogs Connect page, as an alum, you will immediately be um, put in the school or college that you graduated from. So whether that's Adrian or Schaefer, any, Schaefer, any, any school that you graduated from, it'll automatically put you there. You would then self-select if you want to be a part of the DEI committee. Within the committee, you will then, now that you've kind of experienced this process, wherever your passion is, whether that's advocacy, action, education, or awareness, you can then join the subcommittee of the DEI committee. So those are some action steps that you can take right away to go on, log on to the platform, um, create your account, sign up for the DEI committee, then sign up for that subcommittee as well. Tracy's already put the link in the chat so that you can um, access that information right away. There is a resource tab also in DEI. That resource tab will not only host the recording of this call, but the work of this call and the 7 p.m. call, as well as all the work that we've done over the summer is already located there. So if you will continue to follow this page, um, that will provide the latest and greatest updates. If there's a chat feature within um, the DEI committee, please share ideas, comments, questions, and we will absolutely get back to you on answering anything that you wanna ask us within that platform. Renita, the next slide. Within the next slide, here is Tracy Williams um, information, my William, the website, and of course, again, Horn Frogs Connect. We are gonna be hosting most of our events now through Horn Frogs Connect because it's a global platform that's available and for our international students, it can be translated in their language of origin so that it allows anyone to access that information 24 hours a day. Um, and as well as give us any, if you have any questions for us, this is the way to reach us. Again, we are working virtually. Um, I will be alternating between my office here and my office at home, and um, but we're available Monday through Friday. So please feel free to reach out. And if you wanna um, reach out to me or Tracy online um, through Horn Parks Connect, you can do that as well. So we certainly appreciate everybody's time and dedication today. We're wrapping it up right at two o'clock as promised. And then, and then right before we, we go, do you want to remind yeah. them how to sign up for chair or reporter? Yeah. So um, as the chair reporter, I'll repost that. I'll re copy that link in the chat so that if you now, um, whoops, if you now think that that is an area that you would like to participate, we welcome you to self-nominate yourself for that. Um, and I post it now. There you go. You can access that link um, and sign up to be a subcommittee chair or a reporter, and we welcome you to take part in of that process. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Have you so much for your time today. Thursday. So go much, Frogs. Everybody.